Well, I'm talking to my mom again, right? And so this time she's telling me, hey, we got ants in the house by the front door. No big deal. I said, put down ant traps. She goes, no, we're not going to put down ant traps. I said, what are you talking about? Because we're going to spray vinegar everywhere. Okay, well, what that? what's that going to do? Oh, well, that keeps him out. Oh, well, we're going to call a guy and he's going to spray something outside so an exterminator comes over. Doesn't want him in the house. Doesn't want the dog in the house. Such in the ant traps or anything like that or having chemicals. All this stuff on and on. There's still an ant problem. Just, just get ant traps. That's the point. You put, well, how long does that take? I had some ants. You unload the whole box. You put them by the front door. They're all dead. It's easy. I don't understand the aversion to the, to the ant traps, but, you know. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to talk about how you can speed up your autopilot deployment process, specifically talking about when the user signs in and they're at the enrollment status page, uh, what should a good you know, provisioning time be? We're going to do something interesting here. We're going to put up a real live stream of one of my devices in my lab going through the autopilot provisioning process so we can see everything I'm showing you, what the experience ends up looking like in real time. And we'll see if I can figure out how to get like a timestamp thing up there. It might be pretty cool. There's probably nothing there that I'm pointing to, but it hopefully will be there uh, soon. I mean, I don't know. Before long, it's not going to be, you know, uh, there's going to be like caution tape. It's going to be an ant investigation instead of actual ant traps or, you know, there's going to be some just going to like put milk down or so. Who knows what's going to happen? Get Rubik's solving for the modern workplace. All right. So one of the questions I get all the time is how to speed up an autopilot deployment. You know, and, and you've seen me go through it here. Uh, typically, when we're going through a provisioning, we're looking at somewhere between, I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And of course, that all depends on what you're pushing. But I think it's very important we go through what actually impacts the time in an autopilot deployment. So first thing we're going to do, probably the most important thing, is go to Devices, Windows, Enrollment. And we're going to look at the Enrollment Status page. So of course the enrollment status page is the page in the beginning that is pretty much determines what you're waiting for. Um, so I have one specifically for cloud PCs, but then I have my default for all users, all devices. Now, even though you have the ability to make different enrollment status pages for different device groups, uh, you know, I would really question, you know, if, if that's necessary, the apps and, and policies aren't assigning to that enrollment status page. The enrollment status page is just waiting if something happens to be assigned. So if I say, hey, wait for Google Chrome if it's assigned. I don't need a profile for Google Chrome and one that doesn't have Google Chrome. It's only going to make it wait if it's there. So just something to think about to kind of consolidate how many enrollment status page settings people have. I, I generally see a lot of them and it's not always necessary. Okay, so I'm going to click on properties and let's open these up and take a look at some settings. So first we have to turn this on. That has to be yes. Um, this is the amount of time uh, it takes before you show an error. Um, honestly, I, I generally don't touch it. I know from testing and validation in organizations where I'm configuring this, um, I don't want it going beyond 30 minutes. I'll leave it 60 just in case there's some, you know, variance in internet speed or, you know, some things you can't control. But uh, I, I have seen people try to change this and make it a much larger number. And to be honest, that's not really fixing the problem. You're going to want to look at everything else so that you never hit that 60 minutes. Uh, you know, 60 minutes, I don't believe makes for a good provisioning experience. Perhaps if you were pre-provisioning and the end user wasn't doing it, maybe. But I would say let's try to leave that and fix everything else around it. Uh, so I'm going to jump right to the block device until required apps are installed. I see this a lot where folks set this to all. If this is set to all, that means you're going to be sitting at the enrollment status page until every app is installed on the machine that you have assigned. So if you have 20 required apps to that device, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But do you want your end users to sit there before getting to the desktop while waiting for all 20 apps? Is that is that really necessary? So this is where the balance of uh, autopilot comes in, where we have to start making some decisions in order to get a better user experience. So I'm going to hit selected and we're going to click select apps. So this is where you get to determine 
uh, what is really important for end users to, to have to wait for. Um, so one of the things I always include is my autopilot branding. Obviously that's the only way it can work before there's a user. Um, does our customizations does not take very long at all. So that's, that's absolutely fine to me. Obviously a very popular one would be, uh, Microsoft 365. So your office applications. Uh, that will be right here. I'm going to go ahead and leave that there. Um, now, it's not a bad idea to have some kind of endpoint protection. I, I use Defender for endpoint, so I don't have to deploy anything. It's pretty cool for Defender for endpoint. If you did use something, for example, I'm just picking malware bytes. Maybe you have Carbon Black, Ground Strike, you know, Semantic, just something there. Um, and you'd want to include that. And let's say an app that everyone gets perhaps uh google chrome that's six seven eight let's pick the latest version okay maybe a google chrome and uh maybe a vpn thing so i use the global secure access client by uh microsoft so one two three four five applications so even though i may be requiring you know 20 to be pushed to the device I'm only waiting for these five that I've deemed absolutely critical to be there before the user is at the desktop. Something else to consider is once the user is at the desktop, you can continue to have more applications coming down in the background. But I would encourage folks to think about, you know, different user behavior. Use the company portal, right, where users can go. Uh, browse apps that you've made available to them based on their group and download what they want. When a user clicks the install button for, let's say, Notepad++, you know, they know they clicked install. They're watching the progress in real time. There's not this waiting of when is my stuff going to get here because they initiated it. So not only is it easier for the admin side, it's a better user experience. You know, I'm a firm believer that our users are more educated than they've ever been in self-serving for apps. Q, Apple's App Store, Google's Play Store. We know how to download software now. This is not a new concept. So, you know, the idea that you have to provision everything, I think is some traditional endpoint mentality versus modern management. I'm not saying that you have to. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with provisioning apps. I'm saying something to think about as an alternative. And it's something I see a lot of organizations uh, adopt who are trying to get to a more modern state. Okay, from a policy standpoint, there are also two things you can do to really speed up the user experience for autopilot. The first one is skipping the first sign in animation. The first sign in animation is that long, slow, we're happy you're here, we're getting things ready for you, you know, once autopilot completes. And you can disable that and simply leave it at the sign in or, or the lock screen and it says preparing for Windows. Um, so I'm going to show you where to get this setting. This is in the settings catalog. Sign in animation. I believe that's what it's called. We'll search for it. I think if we just search animation, it should come up. There's not a whole lot under animation. There we go. Windows login, enable first animation. You can see here uh, to control whether the user sees the first sign in animation. So we can set that to disabled. The other policy we're going to set is going to allow us to skip the user tracking portion of the ESP. So this one kind of has a little bit of a long history that's annoying. So the, the enrollment status page going back to Windows 10 has three sections, device preparation, device setup, and then the account setup on the bottom. That's the user setup. Uh, there's a little benefit here. And unfortunately, the main point is this is never really tracked correctly, right? Um, it generally leads to problems. It generally leads to things taking a lot longer. A very early remedy to kind of get through long autopilot times going back to the beginning was to disable this. And it still holds true today because most of the important stuff we're going to target at the device level. And if it's user, it could certainly come down after, you know, the user has logged into the PC. So by disabling this, you're going to immediately see a uh, much shorter provisioning time. So I'm going to show you how to do that with a policy. Okay, so to set that, we're going to create a new policy. We're going to hit Windows 10 and later, templates, and we're going to choose the custom because this is a custom OMA URI CSP. And we're going to call this skip user ESP. And we're going to add a row to our settings. So skip user status page. 
is what we're going to call the setting and it's going to be enabled. And I'm going to include this below so you have it. It's going to be vendor Microsoft DM client providers MSDM server first sync status skip user status page your data type is going to be a boolean and the value is true and you can assign those two policies to your autopilot device groups or better yet even all devices as for me that's always just a standard hopefully by now this completed and i figured out how to put the timestamp up there if i did that's going to look pretty cool but i just wanted to do this to show you in real time what uh, um you know i would expect a typical autopilot experience to look like. I think it's really important when I talk to folks and the feedback is, well, autopilot takes too long. You know, well, how are we configuring Intune, right? Because that's the whole trick is finding that balancing act, right? And there are some organizations who say, you know, I, I can't break it down to just, or narrow it, I can't narrow it down to just five applications. I need my full 20, my full full 30. And that's what pre-provisioning is for. And if you're not familiar with pre-provisioning, we are going to do an episode covering it. It's, it's hard to demo because you can't use VMs, but I'm working on it. So we are going to talk about that. But for the end user driven autopilot flow, it's really important to get this tuned in. Give everyone a good experience. You know, hop in the discord. Let me know what you think. I'm going to put that policy below somewhere and we'll be seeing you.